We would like to start the Historic Preservation and Barn Preservation Grant Ceremony. My name is Laura Treishman. It is my honor to serve as the Vermont State Historic Preservation Officer. Um, the state of Vermont recognizes very important and not so important landmarks in our communities. Um, these are historic, civic, and agricultural buildings that are significant to our culture and obviously to our economy. Historic barns, churches, libraries, and town halls have all been an integral part of our landscape. And these are the buildings that we treasure and are honoring today with this grant ceremony. 29 applicants have been awarded this year with the historic preservation and the barn grant preservation. So we're very excited. Since 1986, the state of Vermont has granted over 5.3 million to over 550 communities for preservation projects and 3.5 million to support more than 390 projects to preserve historic agricultural buildings. Grants are given to aid large and ambitious projects and towards the preservation of important state and local landmarks such as the Grand Isle Lake House, the United Baptist Church in Pulteney, and Mountain View Farm in East Burke. Grants are given to support small and volunteer organizations and small-scale farming operations in places like Albany, Enosburg, New Haven, and Newberry. We've seen from the program's track record that even a small grant has a very big impact. We hope these projects will encourage others to become involved in preserving historic resources throughout Vermont. I really want to applaud you in preserving these resources that are really the heart of our community, the heart of our state. They are the icons that people come to visit and remember when they leave. And hopefully we'll come back to visit. <laughs> I really want to give a good shout out to Caitlin Corkins, who is our she administers this program. She is going to be your very best friend. She is going to frustrate you. She will eventually answer your phone calls and get right back to you with answers. She is your problem solver and will be with you throughout the process, from the handing out of the big checks to the closeout where you get the real check. I also want to um, point out Debbie Sayers, who has been supporting us in this program for a number of years. Debbie's going to be retiring this year after working with the state of Vermont for 30 years. And so I'm not quite sure next year's ceremony will be this well organized. Um, but I just really want to call out Debbie, who's hiding over in the corner. And also to everyone else in the Division for Historic Preservation, the Department of Housing and Community Development, and the Agency of Commerce and Community Development, where we're located. We are a close-knit agency, and we work really, really well together. Um, and with that, I would like to introduce our esteemed Deputy Secretary, Ted Brady. Thanks so much, Laura. Let me just adjust the mic a bit. <laughs> Ah. Well, uh, congratulations to all the grant award winners today, uh, and thank you for the time and effort you've put into uh, really being a caretaker for some of Vermont's most important assets over years and years and years and going into the future. So thank you, most importantly. We, we're here, obviously, to announce two sets of grants today uh, and to celebrate two sets of grants. Our, our barn grants, but also our historic preservation grants, two separate uh, programs that we're fortunate enough that the legislators in, in this room and in this building make sure we have funding for each year. It's really important that you thank a legislator today and tell them uh, that this is a really important piece of funding. We do this, we do these two grant programs because they meet the very essence of, maybe you've heard of the governor's three main uh, efforts, right? We're trying to grow the economy, we're trying to protect the most vulnerable, and we're trying to make Vermont more, uh, more affordable. Well, how does historic preservation do that? Real quickly, historic preservation is not an ends, right? Historic preservation's, it, it, preservation is a means. It's a means by uh, a way of which we uh, build community, 
we, we either restore or preserve or create a sense of place, which is really what Vermont economic development is all about, that place-based economic development. Uh, it's a way that we create housing in so many circumstances. Historic preservation <laughs> creates housing. It's a way we create jobs. It's a way we drag people from all over 13 million different people, I should say 13 million people, because they're not all different, uh, <laughs> to Vermont each year to invest $2.8 billion in Vermont's economy. Historic preservation does all of that. And it's not an overstatement to say that. Now, historic preservation is also kind of complicated. Uh, economic realities, uh, I know, it's a silly thing to say. I often make the maintenance of these buildings uh, difficult, if not impossible, right? We have transitions in the way we farm. We have transitions in the way we shop. We have transitions in the way we, uh, uh, where we work. All these things just make the preservation of these vital assets really a, a market failure because the market no longer supports it alone. And so that's where the state has to come in and provide some assistance. Your nonprofits come in to provide a lot of assistance. These programs allow for the repurposing uh, and reuse of historic structures. Again, we don't preserve things to preserve them and pickle them. We preserve things so you can use them and enjoy them and uh, so they can multiply the economy. Uh, the success of these projects uh, really uh, dictates the success of us as we try to make Vermont the most desirable place to live, work, and play in the country. That's our kind of whole, yeah, right? You can <laughs> clap for that, it's okay. So this year we're, yeah, yeah, thank you, Senator Clarkson. I'm no Bernie Sanders, I don't know when to pause. <laughs> so this year we're, uh, we're really excited to announce more than uh, 200,000, $212,000 in historic preservation grants uh, that's going to leverage almost three quarters of a million dollars in 14 uh, historically significant community buildings this year. Everything from one of the most iconic buildings in Vermont, that uh, the, the church at the top of Church Street, to buildings that I believe will be iconic buildings again in so many small communities. We're also awarding more than $200,000 in barn preservation grants this year, uh, which will leverage an additional $658,000 of other funding in 15 different agricultural buildings. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's an amazing thing because you need to realize you are amongst the lucky ones, as you probably know because you've applied before and been denied. Uh, we get nearly three times demand for this program than we have funding. Uh, this year, we had 94 applications uh, asking for more than $1.3 million in grants. We have $400,000 to give out uh, thanks to uh, the legislature and specifically uh, the, the uh, capital bill and the committees that do work on the capital bill. Um, we get that $400,000 and we're expecting, we're, we've asked for another $400,000 in the next budget year. Um, so you'll hear in a few moments from Caitlin, uh, the actual grant award winners. Uh, so I won't get deep into that, but I have a few thank yous I need to make. You heard me reference the legislature. Specifically, I wanna thank the chair of the um, both the, the Senate and House Institution Committees, Senator Benning, Joe Benning, uh, a good Northeast Kingdom boy, and Representative Alice Emmons uh, on the House side, who really make sure that this funding comes through for us. But the most important people you should thank are the folks from the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation. As you guys know, we don't make these decisions. Uh, a council of volunteers appointed by the governor makes these decisions. Uh, and they undertake state and federal responsibilities, including making these grant recommendations. And I'm not sure if Edward Clark is here. If you are, can you wave? No, he's the chair of that board. And uh, just, again, another person we, we should all thank. And then uh, we need to thank our partners. We all know the most important person in the room uh, is not standing right now, is Paul Broom, right? And the Preservation Trust of Vermont. Let's hear it for Paul. Uh, he's touched, I'm sure, most of these projects some way or another and uh, paid off some members of the Advisory Council one way or another, too, I'm sure. Uh, we also want to thank uh, the Vermont Arts Council. Is Karen here with us today? 
uh, for their uh, representative. Michelle. Michelle is here. Thank you, Michelle. And we want to thank Buildings and, uh, and General Services. Uh, these grants are made. Chris Cole, Commissioner Cole. Not the most important person in the room today. <laughs> Uh, as you may know, the, the uh, grant is made actually through a program in partnership with BGS through the capital bill. And then finally, I want to thank, I'm sorry to go on this long, but I have to, uh, Laura, our State Historic Preservation Officer, who does such an incredible job. Yeah, let's hear it. She's already showered Caitlin with love, but she deserves more. Thank you, Caitlin. And, Finally, Deb. Uh, Deb, uh, I want to thank you on your way out. I see Representative McCaig from Williston here. I'm a Williston boy, so just, and Yvonne is a Williston uh, gal. Just, I'm glad there's a Williston project on this list this year, as you will find out. So on your way out, thanks for being so nice to Williston. Uh, and with that, I'm going to hand it over to Caitlin. Thank you. I think that's what this is, fluttering your podium. I've got to move it down again. <laughs> so uh, hello, everyone. I'm Caitlin Corkins. I'm so glad to see the full room here today. Uh, just the logistics of how this is going to work. Um, I'm going to be announcing each project. Uh, we're going to ask the folks to come up here and stand between the banners. Laura is going to give you your, your big check. And then we're going to take some photos. If there are legislators in the room that are representing the district, please come up as well um, to share in the spotlight. Um, I'm going to be announcing these by county, so it's going to be a little bit all over the place in terms of some are going to be barn grants and some are going to be historic preservation grants and we've just mixed them all up. Okay, so to begin with we're going to start in Addison County with Elm Haven Farm in Addison and John and Jane Spencer. Come on up. So Elm Haven Farm was purchased by George and Ella Spencer, John's grandparents, in 1901 and was a multifaceted commercial operation that included cattle, apples, and honey. The farm's main bank barn was constructed in 1908 along Route 22A, which is, as ho hopefully most of you know, a major north-south travel corridor. The farm's acreage is now rented to local farmers or conserved through the Vermont Land Trust and a matching grant of $15,000 will support work to repair the main barn's foundation and sills and rehabilitate its iconic cupola. So next we have the Miller Farmstead in Ferrisburg and Amy Donors here. <laughs> if you can get through the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So Miller Farmstead was built uh, circa 1830 by Simeon Miller, an early Ferrisburg set settler. The property includes multiple agricultural buildings, including a circa 1820 barn, an ice house, and a granary. Two years ago, uh, Amy received a grant to complete major work um, to rehabilitate the main barn's foundation and structure. And now a second grant will allow her to tackle replacement of the barn's leaking roof and complete window and door restoration. So congratulations. So next we have Old Nash Farm in New Haven. And I'm not sure Nicole was able to join us if she's here. Come on up. I think, she, I think she had kid duty. <laughs> so $15,000 grant, yeah. <laughs> so um, this 170-acre property on the New Haven River was originally settled by Ariel Thompson in 1814 and has been actively farmed ever since. The farm was named for General Nash, who was a prominent local fi figure involved in politics and banking. The main Gambrel barn on the property originally supported a dairy operation and is now used to house chickens and a small farm stand. Funds to support roof replacement and floor repairs will allow the owners to expand the barn's use for additional livestock. 
their honey and kombucha production and public and education events. So next we have uh, Virgen's St. Paul's Episcopal Church. Oh, good. And Reverend Alan Kittleson. <laughs> Yay. So St. Paul's Episcopal Church is located next to the city green in Virgen's. Constructed in 1834, the building's Gothic revival design was drawn by John Henry Hopkins, who was Vermont's first Episcopal Bishop. An important community gathering place uh, a $20,000 historic preservation grant will help the church restore three large stained glass windows facing the green. into Caledonia County and Lyman Crown Farm in Barnet. Um, unfortunately, Paul Conrad couldn't be here, but I believe we have a legislator. Wonderful. Who's going to come up and expect, accept the check? <laughs> so, previously a dairy farm of 110 acres purchased by Lyman and Annie Crown in 1947. The current applicant's parents purchased the 37-acre property in 1967. Uh, the three-level barn on the property was modified in the 20th century with the addition of a gambrel roof. It's currently used for hay storage to support a neighboring beef cattle operation. Uh, and this matching grant of $15,000 will support work to replace the barn's failing metal roof. So congratulations to Paul. And next we have Mountain View Farm in Burke. And uh, Steve Elliott and his wife Carolyn are here. So Elmer Darling established Mountain View Farm in 1883. This gentleman's farm raised prize-winning Morgan horses and Jersey cows and produced Darling brand uh, cheese and butter. It once encompassed 7,000 acres, which is pretty incredible. Uh, the farm also included several agricultural buildings, including a breeding barn for Morgan horses built in 1897. Today, this horse barn is used for public events. The barn grant will allow the, uh, the owner to complete repairs to the barn's brick foundation. Thank you. Thank you. So next we have Echo Ledge Farm in Kirby. Uh, and the, the owners, Sarah Voorhees and Elizabeth Lafferty, could not be here today. Um, this is the first grant I, I think we've ever given to a property in Kirby, so that's exciting. Oh, I'm finally going to get to go to Kirby. <laughs> uh, according to survey documents, this farm was settled by Peter Page in 1793 and is one of the first settlements of Hopkinsville, which is what would become the town of Kirby. The main barn on this property dates to circa 1898, and today it sits on 17 acres. A matching grant of $15,000 will help the owners to make foundation repairs and roof repairs, uh, specifically flashing repairs around the cupola. And once rehabilitated, the owners plan to use the barn for small scale animal farming and for holding public events. Uh, next, we have St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in St. Johnsbury, and Diane Montague is here. St. <laughs> Andrew's Church was constructed in 1877 and continues to be used for religious services, as well as by a wide variety of community groups. Since 2011, it's hosted a summer and fall concert series uh, and provides space for local meetings and a meals program, all really important social services. The church received a historic preservation grant back in 2014 uh, to undertake several important repairs, including installation of a new roof on the church. And so now this grant of $11,500 will support restoration of the stained glass windows on the building's south elevation. Thank you. Okay, 
So now we're in Chittenden County. <laughs> um, we're going to start with um, the Ahavath Garam Synagogue in Burlington. I hope I pronounced that right. <laughs> Do you have anyone here from? Yes. Oh, there you are. Good. Richard Backer. So the oldest continually operated synagogue in Vermont was founded by the Burlington Lithuanian Jewish community. The Ahavath Garam Synagogue was constructed in 1885. The building is currently home to two Jewish congregations and is open to the public for community, music, and dance events. A grant of $7,429 will help support work to repair the building's slate roof. Congratulations. And also in Burlington, we have the First Unitarian Universalist Society, otherwise known as the Church Street Church. <laughs> and Doug Watkins here. Uh, the Unitarian Universalist Meeting House was designed by Boston architect Peter Banner in the federal style and was built in 1816. Standing as a landmark at the head of Burlington's Church Street, the church continues to have an active congregation and is used as a gathering place for social organizations and as a venue for meetings, concerts, and events. Preservation funds will help fund work to consolidate and repair window frames um, and window sills of the main sanctuary, as well as lower level windows, and to com uh, the complete restoration of the monumental arch window at the front of the church's tower. And in Williston, we have the Johnson Farm. Uh, unfortunately, Denny and Kathy Lewis um, were not able to be here today, but I, I heard from Ted there were some Williston folks here. So. <laughs> Come on up. So Johnson Farm was founded in 1787 by Dan Johnson, one of the original settlers of the town of Williston and has been actively farmed by his descendants ever since its founding. That's really remarkable. Um, the 210-acre conserved farmstead serves as a highly visible eastern gateway into Williston, uh, bordering the north and south sides of Route 2 and Interstate 89. So if any of you guys came on 89 south to Montpelier, you passed this farm and you saw it. Uh, owners and Denny, Kath Denny and Kathy Lewis continue to operate an organic dairy, which is why they couldn't be here today, um, and will use this barn grant to complete frame framing repairs on the farm's circa 1840 heifer barn. Okay, moving into Franklin County. First up, we have uh, the Masonic Hall in Enosburg, and we do have some folks here, Julie Trigon. I saw her. Oh, here you are. <laughs> so originally constructed in 1853 as a Baptist church, Enosburg's Masonic Hall underwent significant renovations and was moved to its current location in 1896. Uh, the building was then purchased by the Masons in 1962. It's currently used by the local food shelf um, and the local Masonic Lodge. The property's prominent side lawn is also used for public events and festivals throughout the warm season, which we're finally getting into here. Uh, a grant of $7,325 will support restoration of the windows on the building's south elevation. And next in Franklin, we have the Hammond Homestead. And uh, Judith McLaughlin and Robert Cormier couldn't be here, but again, we've got a legislator who's going to... Or two. Or, oh, yeah. wonderful. <laughs> you can fight over who gets to give them the big chat. <laughs> no rabbit ears. <laughs> so the Hammond Bank Barn was constructed oh. <laughs> circa 1898 to replace an earlier barn that burned when it was struck by lightning. The homestead, a former dairy and horse farm, is located one mile north of Lake Carmi State Park and the main barn is now used for a small family farming operation with the upper level used for public functions. This barn grant will help replace the rotted cell at the barn's <coughs> east elevation, address some drainage issues, and repair the roof. Congratulations. Okay, next in Georgia, we have Bedrock Farm. Is Ronnie here, Ronnie Sweet? 
So Ronnie's parents, um, who is, he's now the current owner of Bedrock Farm, purchased the property in 1982 uh, and operated as a dairy farm. It's still in active use, which is again why he's probably not here today. Uh, the farm's tie stall barn was built in 1956. I think this is the youngest of our historic barns, but it's, it's historic, 1956. Um, a matching grant of $14,611 will allow Ronnie to repair the barn's deteriorated walls and replace the original asbestos siding with cement siding to closely match its historic appearance. And next, we have the town of St. Albans and the St. Albans Bay Park Stone House. Jennifer Gray and Alan Mashtar? Mashtar? Mashtar. <laughs> oh, yes, she has some swag. Excellent. <laughs> so the Bay Park Stone House was built in 1933 by the Civilian Conservation Corps. Uh, initially, it was named the Stone Bath House and served swimmers at St. Albans Bay. Today, the building hosts school groups, social func functions, and concerts in the central auditorium with a public restroom and changing rooms in the wings. The town of St. Albans is embarking on a major rehabilitation campaign of this much-loved building, and grant funds will support repair of the building's doors and windows. We have John Wadhams here representing Blake House. Yes, it's right there. <laughs> so constructed as a hotel called Island Villa in 1901, and then used as a Catholic girls summer camp known as Camp Mary Crest between 1956 and 1993, the Grand Isle Lake House is now owned by the Preservation Trust of Vermont. It's used as a seasonal venue for both private events and by a variety of nonprofit organizations as a retreat center. Matching grant funds will support a multi year project to repair the building's distinctive mansard roof, including replacement of the cedar shingles. I understand work is underway and has to be done by May 15th before the wedding starts. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys may win the prize for first project completed this time. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> And also uh, in uh, Grand Isle County, Isle Lamont, uh, the Isle Lamont Historical Society, and the Duba Blacksmith Shop. Hi, Teresa. Terry, good to meet you. Hi, Caitlin, nice to see you. Hi, good to see you too. <laughs> so the Duba Blacksmith Shop was constructed in 1830 and used as a blacksmith shop and forge by three generations of the Duba family for over 130 years. In 1960, the building and all its contents were donated to the Isle of Mott Historical Society, which now uses the building to exhibit and, inter and interpret this important piece of Isle of Mott's industrial past. Matching grant funds of $12,064 and $12, will support a comprehensive scope of rehabilitation work on the building from its sills to its roof. Thank you. Congratulations. And in Lamoille County, uh, Vermont Studio Center for Barbara White Studios. Is Sarah here? She is. There she is, Sarah Judd. So originally part of the Lamoille County Grammar School and named after the school's founder, Chesamore Hall, which is now known as Barbara White Studios, was constructed in 1866. Continuously used for education, the building was owned by Johnson State College between 1957 and 1981, and then purchased by the Vermont Studio Center in 1984. The building currently houses 16 artist studios, two print shops, and a photography dark room. It's open to the public for uh, open studio evenings, and a division grant of $20,000 will allow the Studio Center to replace the building's standing seam metal roof. So next we have Orange County in Bradford, the Old Church Theater. Oh, good. 
whole group here. <laughs> Constructed in 1793 as a community church, this building also served as an Odd Fellows Hall before becoming the home of the old church theater in 1984. This community theater group puts on five productions annually and offers open additions to encourage everyone to participate in theater. A matching grant of $12,064 will support work to address serious structural framing concerns to ensure that the theater can continue to use the building safely. Congratulations. So next in Newbury, we have the Tenney Memorial Library. I don't think anyone was here. Uh, the Tenney Memorial Library was constructed in 1897 in the Richardsonian Romanesque style. It continues to serve as a library and community meeting and gathering place. The library completed repairs to the building's slate roof with the help of a previous grant in 2015. And we'll use this grant of $3,750 to fund repairs to the entry doors, historic windows, and original plaster in the children's room. Okay, moving into Orleans County, we have Hillside Farm, um, or also known as the Old Kennison Farm in Albany, and Catherine Tolman. One of two remaining agricultural structures on the 100-acre farm, the circa 1840s barn was last used for housing beef cattle and poultry in the 1990s. Um, the property was farmed by three generations of the Kennisons between 1866 and 1968. A barn grant will allow the new owner, Catherine Tolman, who purchased the property in 2014, to complete framing, siding, window, and door repairs. Once this work is completed, uh, CAP plans to use the barn to board dairy cattle for Sweet Rowan Farmstead, which is a local organic dairy farm and creamery. <laughs> and in Craftsbury, we have uh, the Murphy Barn, and I don't think Lucia could be here today. <laughs> good, yay, good. So located near Craftsbury Common and the Craftsbury Outdoor Center, the barn on this property was built in 1870 with a rare stacked wood silo added in 1890. It's quite the, quite the silo. It's really neat. Um, originally used for dairy farming and sugaring, in 1954, the property was purchased by Mrs. Willard and Lowell, who turned it into a summer riding camp for girls called Holiday Hill Farm. Um, Grant funding will be used to support foundation repairs to both the silo and the main barn. $15,000 grant, congratulations. Is there anybody in this room not getting a grant? I'm not getting a grant. <laughs> <You're from laughs> Okay, now we're in Rutland County and the United Baptist Church in Pulteney. Is Janet able to be here? Come on up. <laughs> there it is. It's also on the banner. <laughs> we didn't plan that, by the way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Set on the green in East Pulteney, the United Baptist Church was designed and built by Elisha Scott of Tolman, Connecticut in 1805. Based on the designs of Asher Benjamin, it's one of the most outstanding examples of federal style, style architecture in Vermont. A matching grant from the division will allow the church to address major repairs needed to restore the building's iconic steeple. Congratulations. And next we have the town of Proctor uh, for their town hall and Stan Wilbur's here. <laughs> Originally constructed as a schoolhouse by William Humphrey in 1836, this building was converted into a public library in the 1890s and following World War I, it became Proctor's town hall. 
Grant funds will help the town address the failing entry steps and retaining wall at the front of the building, which have become a safety concern. Uh, the $20,000 $20, grant um, also includes drainage work to prevent future damage to that entry. And in Rutland, we have Idle Hour Farm. Uh, Richard and Sarah Kessel, I don't think they were able to be here, but please. <laughs> please come. <laughs> um, so this farm was previously owned by the Vermont Marble <coughs> Company uh, and includes three historic barns constructed between 1820 and 1870. The property was sold to Thomas Gurdon Sr. in 1938 and supported a dairy operation. Um, and the current owners who reach, recently purchased the property will use their $15,000 matching grant to support work on the hay barn slate roof and framing repairs. Okay, Washington County. <laughs> In Callis, we have Memorial Hall. Mary Jacobson and Chris Cochran. <laughs> Memorial Hall is one of only a handful of Grand Army of the Republic Memorial Halls dedicated to the memory of uh, the Union veterans of the Civil War and the fraternal organization they founded. Built in 1885, the building has long served as a community gathering place hosting a wide range of civic events. The North Callis Memorial Hall Association was re recently formed to ensure the continued use of this building. A uh, matching grant of $20,000 will help them to address structural deficiencies that forced the building's recent closure. So we're looking forward to it being back open. And in East Montpelier, we have Center Farm. Erica Zimmerman is here. So long known as Center Farm, this property was originally called Clough Tavern and was settled in 1792. The farm's large Gambrel barn was built circa 1930 and used as part of a dairy operation. Uh, the current owners, Erica and her husband, Kevin, uh, purchased the property in 2004 and used the barn to support a pastured livestock operation for raising and selling grass-fed sheep, um, pastured poultry, and pigs and a Division for Historic Preservation grant of $5,200 will support work to repair the barn's original metal roof. Congratulations. Okay, and Windsor County. Did Allison leave? Did Allison leave? <laughs> oh no. <Yes. laughs> She'd be so excited. Okay, in Andover we have uh, Red Top Farm. Uh, Sarah Riley and Kate, Sarah Riley, Rob Riley, Kate and John Roll. I think those are all up there. Great. <laughs> so this property has been in the Marsh family since the 1790s, which is really amazing. Around 1890, the current owner's great grandfather, Arthur Richmond Marsh, consolidated the family holdings and purchased adjoining property until the farm encompass encompassed 630 acres. Today, Red Top Farm retains two connected agricultural buildings from this period, the upper horse barn and the lower hay barn. Work to repair the foundation and sills of the lower barn, along with removal of a circa 1950s concrete floor and drainage work around the barn's perimeter will be completed with help from this $15,000 matching grant. Congratulations. Thank you. And last but not least, we have the Hoisington Farm in Weathersfield. Did I say that right, Brian? Yep. Brian Bosenberg is here. <laughs> so this farmstead dates to the earliest settlement of Weathersfield and includes multiple buildings, including a large bank barn that was constructed in at least three sections beginning in the early 19th century. Originally part of a dairy, the farm was later converted to raising beef cattle, and it's now used to support a forest products, mushroom, and vineyard operation. Quite the variety there. 
The foundation repairs on the northwest and east elevations of the main barn will be completed with the aid of this $15,000 matching grant. Congratulations. So in closing, I just want to um, once again thank everyone for being here today and, and a shout out especially to all of the folks who received grants today. Um, it's a really an honor for me to work on this program and get to work with all of you who are doing such amazing things all around the state. So congratulations to you all. Thank you.